What if polar bears were introduced to the African savanna? What if the Arctic's apex predator woke up one day under the blazing African sun? What if a polar bear, master of the ice, suddenly found itself paddling across golden grasslands instead of frozen tundra? It sounds like a setup for a crazy cartoon or a sci-fi experiment, but as wildlife enthusiasts, let's seriously imagine this scenario. How would a polar bear cope with the heat, their strange new menu of prey, and the unfamiliar neighbors like lions and hyenas? Built for the cold, not for the gold. Polar bears are marvelously engineered for life on ice and snow, not for sun and sand. In their Arctic home, winter temperatures can plummet to minus 40 degrees Celsius, and polar bears thrive in it. How? They come equipped with a two-layer fur coat and up to 10 centimeters, four inches of blubber under the skin, an excellent thermal outfit that would make any ski jacket jealous. In fact, they're such superbly insulated creatures that they can overheat at anything above 10 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, Height. Yes, you read that right. A balmy spring day could give a polar bear heat stroke. Think about the African savanna, where midday temperatures routinely soar past 30 degrees Celsius. That's three times what might make a polar bear uncomfortably hot. Polar bears normally avoid overheating by taking it easy. They tend to walk slowly and rest often, and they can run only in short bursts before getting too hot. On the open savanna, our furry Arctic friend would be panting in the shade by mid-morning. Unlike humans, bears don't sweat much. They rely on panting and releasing heat from hairless areas like nose and foot pads, or by taking a swim. But a polar bear in the savanna might find that shade is sparse and swimming pools are occupied by hippos. And here's a quirky fact. Even in zoos located in warm climates, polar bears struggle. In one famous case, two polar bears in the tropical heat of Singapore started turning green. Not from envy, but from algae growing in their hollow fur. The humidity and warmth allowed algae to tint their coats until zookeepers gave them a nice shampoo. Now imagine a polar bear living full time in the savannah's heat. It's a recipe for one unbearably uncomfortable bear. A scorching new world, heat and water woes. In the Arctic, staying warm is the challenge. In Africa, staying cool and hydrated would be the polar bear's biggest struggle. Picture our poor bear under the African sun, it's black skin. Yes, polar bears have black skin under that fur, soaking up rays and its white coat offering no camouflage among brown grasses. The savanna sun would beat down mercilessly. We might find our polar bear seeking refuge in mud wallows like a buffalo, or immersing itself in any available water hole just to cool off. Water is another headache. Polar bears typically get most of their water from the prey they eat and from melting snow or ice. In Africa, there's no sea ice to lick and snow cones aren't on the menu. Any introduced polar bear would have to drink from lakes or streams alongside elephants, antelopes, and thirsty zebras. That is, if it can even find a lake. In the dry season, water sources shrink and become battlegrounds for wildlife. Overheating isn't just about discomfort. It can be deadly. Zoos in warm countries have seen polar bears suffer or even die during heat waves when cooling systems failed. In Argentina's Buenos Aires Zoo, the last polar bear, aptly named Winner, died during a scorching 40 degrees Celsius Christmas heat wave because he simply couldn't dump heat fast enough. A polar bear in the wild savanna would face the same risk of hypothermia, overheating daily, especially if it tried to chase prey under the sun. The harsh reality is that an African savanna afternoon could do what an Arctic blizzard never would, put a polar bear's life in peril from heat exhaustion. Dinner dilemma, what's on the menu? If our polar bear got past the heat issue, a big if. The next question is, what's for dinner? In the Arctic, polar bears are hyper carnivores with a very specialized palate. Their favorite food is seal blubber, essentially fat, fat, and more fat. This fat-loaded diet is crucial it fuels their massive bodies. In fact, polar bears are so specialized that while they can nibble other things, none of those foods really provide enough calories to keep them going long term. Now plop that polar bear in the savanna. No seals, no whales, no ocean buffets. The bear suddenly has to adapt to an entirely different menu. Perhaps it might eye a zebra or antelope, but here's the catch. Those animals are lean and fast. A juicy seal lounging on an ice flow is a much easier catch for a polar bear than a springbok sprinting at 60 kilometers per hour across open grassland. 
Could the polar bear scavenge? Maybe. Savannas have scavengers galore, hyenas, jackals, vultures, all experts at cleaning up carcasses. A polar bear wouldn't mind a free meal from someone else's kill, but in Africa, every carcass is claimed quickly by resident scavengers. A lone polar bear might approach a lion's leftovers only to be greeted by a chorus of growls from a pack of hyenas that also want the scraps. Talk about a tough crowd at the buffet. And let's not forget, polar bears are used to being top dog with little competition. In the Arctic, no other land predator dares challenge them for food. There are no lions, tigers, or hyena packs up there, only much smaller Arctic foxes or the occasional wolf. On the savannah, by contrast, the polar bear would have to earn every meal, either by outrunning African wildlife, unlikely, or outmuscling other apex predators. More on that next. Clash of the Titans, meeting the neighbors. So what happens when a polar bear bumps into a lion? We're talking about two of the world's greatest predators, but they come from completely different worlds. In a one-on-one -on -one hypothetical brawl, a polar bear has sheer size on its side. Remember, a big male polar bear can be two to three times the weight of a male lion. One swipe of those dinner plate-sized paws could probably knock a lion senseless. A polar bear used to solitary hunting might suddenly face five or six lionesses, plus an angry 200 kilogram male lion all at once. Even for an animal as strong as a polar bear, those odds are not good. How about hyenas? A clan of spotted hyenas is nothing to sniff at. Hyenas are notorious for harassing lions and even stealing kills from lone leopards. To them, a polar bear might just look like a very weird pale lion with a weight problem. they test the bear for sure, perhaps trying to intimidate it with laughter-like whoops and nibbling at its flanks if it had a kill. Adaptation or bear Mageddon. Is there any hope for our transplanted polar bear? Could it adapt if given enough time or special circumstances? In the realm of extreme hypotheticals, let's say a few polar bears were introduced near a large river in a savanna region, perhaps somewhere with a slightly cooler microclimate, like a river delta. They might stick near water, becoming mostly nocturnal to avoid the brutal midday heat. By hunting at night or early dawn, a polar bear might ambush animals at water holes, that could slightly improve its chances. Over many generations, and we're talking thousands of years, the descendants of these polar bears might start looking and behaving more like brown bears or a new species altogether, better suited to warmer climes. After all, polar bears themselves evolved from brown bears starting around 500,000 years ago. Given enough time without dying off, maybe evolution could depolarize the bear. Its coat could get thinner and darker. A white coat in Africa is practically a neon sign saying, I'm over here, to both prey and rivals. Its body size might shrink for heat dispersal, and it could become omnivorous, eating berries, roots, etc., like other bears do, to survive when meat is scarce. But that's a long-shot scenario. In reality, a polar bear can't just will itself to adapt within one lifetime. The first introduced polar bears would suffer all the challenges we've described, likely without surviving long enough to reproduce and adapt. Nature's rulebook is harsh. Adapt or die, and adaptation usually takes many generations. Unfortunately for our imaginary experiment, the savannah would likely claim the polar bear's life before it ever adapts. It's sobering, but also enlightening. This thought experiment highlights how finely tuned animals are to their environments. The polar bear is a master of its arctic niche, powerful, specialized, and even threatened by a warming climate in its native habitat. Dropping it into African grassland is like taking a champion an Olympic skier and making them run a marathon in the desert. Our journey with the polar bear in the African savanna has been part science, part speculation, and a bit of comedy. In sum, the biological and ecological odds are hugely stacked against a polar bear in the savanna. The climate is too hot, the water too scarce, the food too different, and the competition too fierce. While it's fun to imagine what-if scenarios, the reality underscores a serious point. Animals are products of millions of years of adaptation. Put one in the wrong habitat, and it's like fitting a square peg in a round hole, or a polar bear in a tropical suit. It just doesn't work. So, what if polar bears were introduced to the African savanna? In all likelihood, it would be a short-lived experiment with an unhappy ending for the bears. They'd face heat stress almost immediately, struggle to find suitable prey, and encounter dangerous competitors at every turn. 
The savannah ecosystem, honed by ages without bears, would not be kind to an ice bear stranger. However, by exploring this hypothetical, we've gained a greater appreciation for how special polar bears are in their own icy realm, and how special the African savannah is in its own way. Each environment has its champions, and mixing them around is usually a recipe for trouble. It's a reminder to cherish animals where they are meant to be, and protect those habitats so that polar bears don't have to look for a new home down south.